right. Good morning, y'all. Uh, as Jeff said, my name is Ben Bachelitz. Uh, and I'm an engineer here on the cloud team uh, working on the cloud and EC tools. Um, and today I was going to talk to y'all about a couple of kind of loosely related concepts. Um, first, I wanted to talk about configuring logging and uh, in particular log handlers in EC tools. Uh, and then later on, we're going to talk about a new feature that's coming to the next version of EC tools. And that is the configuration schema. <clears throat> so just to kind of start us off, um, there's sometimes a little bit of confusion when we talk about logging with EC tools. Um, we're not talking about logging within Magento. Uh, configuring Magento's logs is a whole other discussion that we don't really want to get into. Uh, we're just talking about the logs that get generated during the deployment of your project, during the build and deploy phases. There's also sometimes a little bit of confusion around um, verbosity. Uh, in particular, there's uh, some controls over uh, the verbosity when you're running Magento commands within EC tools. Uh, that's, again, kind of outside of the scope of this conversation. We're just looking at the log messages that EC tools itself uh, creates. So whenever you talk about logging, of course, you've got to mention log levels. Um, this is going to be familiar information for probably most of you all here, but just to kind of make sure you have a common baseline. You've got different log levels starting from debug going up to emergency. Uh, most of the log levels within EC tools are going to be in this debug info notice range. And then you've got a few that are a little bit higher than that. Uh, and then any log that is at error or higher is considered a failure and it will stop the deployment right there in its tracks. So let's look at some of the, the built in handlers come with EC tools and what their minimum log levels are set at. Um, EC Tools has two handlers enabled by default. The first is the stream handler, and this is what is responsible for printing all the output to the screen during your deployment, right? So this is what puts all the information out on your shell. Uh, and its minimum level is set to info, meaning that anything at info or higher is going to be displayed on your screen while you're running your deployment. The second handler is the file handler, and this is what creates that cloud.log file on your server. Um, and it's minimum level set all the way up at debug, so it's at the, the most verbose output. Um, this level has kind of changed over the different versions of EC tools. We settled on using debug, though, because if there was an issue and one of our support engineers needed to get onto your uh, project, we wanted to make sure they had all available information to do that, right? So they could be able to debug any deployment issues that came up uh, we didn't want them to have to go back and try and, and rerun the pump so they didn't need to. Now, if you create any other handlers, by default, their minimum level is going to be set up at notice. So that's going to be the default for all other handlers besides those two. If you want to change that, though, you've got a couple of different options. Uh, first of all, you can just adjust the minimum level across the board using a configuration min logging level you can see right here, stage global min logging level warning. And by doing that, you're adjusting that default minimum level for all of your handlers. So now everything's going to start at warning and go up from there. If you want a little bit more fine grain control, you can specify the min level on a per handler basis. So if you can see my example here, I'm setting the min level of my stream handler up to notice. So Maybe I want to kind of cut down on some of the noise that's going across my screen, so I'm going to raise its level up to notice. Similarly, I can do the same thing for the file handler. I can adjust its min level and set it up to info. Again, maybe I think the cloud.log file is getting too big. I want to cut down on the amount of data that's going into that, so I'm going to raise it up from debug into info. Now, I mentioned other handlers, so let's talk about what other handlers uh, EC tool supports. You've got syslog and syslog UDP. Uh, there is also a GELF handler, and then you can also configure email and Slack handlers. In a second, I'm going to kind of show you how to configure email and Slack handlers, partially because those are the most popular handlers with other SIs that use Magento Cloud, and partially because they're the easiest ones to set up without creating some kind of third-party external service to handle those log messages. So configuring an email handler is pretty straightforward. 
uh, in your Magento in VYAML, you create an email entry under the log section. You need to tell what address to send all those emails to. So in my example here, I'm sending it to my Adobe address. Uh, and then you need to tell uh, EC tools where those emails should be sent from, what the reply to address is. In this example, I'm just using a dummy no reply example.com address. You may specify what subject you want these emails to have. There's a default subject that uh, EC Tools uses, but maybe you want to customize it, make it a little bit more specific to your project. Uh, and then you can also specify the min level for your email handler, just like the other handlers. And for email, I would say this is actually very, very important. Remember, the default minimum level uh, for all your handlers is notice. So if you don't adjust the min level for your email handler, that means that you're going to be generating an email message for every single notice message or higher in your deployment. That's going to be a lot of emails. By pushing that level up to error, you're going to cut down on the amount of messages that get generated, but you're also kind of changing the purpose of this handler, right? Now your email handler only sends you a message if something has gone wrong, if something an error or higher has happened, meaning your deployment has failed and there is something that you need to go out there and take a look at and figure out what went wrong. Uh, so I very strongly recommend you set the min level at error for your email handlers. Configuring a Slack handler is similar. Um, you need to first have a Slack bot on your server. Creating Slack bots is really outside of the scope of this presentation, but it's not very difficult. Um, once you create it, you give it a few permissions, uh, and then you'll have a token, and then you take that token for your bot, and then you put it into the configuration right there. You can specify what channel your Slack messages should go to. And again, I would recommend doing this. Um, the default channel that is set up is just the general channel on your Slack server. And this is also the default channel for all of your coworkers and other people at your organization. And so they probably don't want a lot of messages being uh, sent out to the general channel and, and kind of flooding their, their Slack messages. That'd be kind of annoying. So I recommend creating some kind of dedicated channel for your Slack bot and then adjusting this setting here in the Gentle EMV YAML. So let's take a break from this presentation and see what some of this kind of looks like in action. Click so should here in my editor. Uh, you can see I've got my log section set up with uh, my email handler configured. I didn't take my own advice. I don't have a min level set there. Uh, and then I have my Slack handler. I've taking the liberty of removing my token so that nobody can try and spam my personal Slack channel with a, a bunch of messages, and then the channel I want it to send to. If I go into my shell, I've got one commit ready to push, so I'll go ahead and do that. And we'll give it a second. Um, hopefully, in a moment, we will see some messages start getting posted into this test channel that I've created here on my Slack server. Um, you can see some of the previous messages that have also been sent. Um, it's worth noting uh, these messages get color-coded, which is kind of cool, right? So all of your notices are color-coded green here. This warning message from a previous deployment gets color-coded as orange. Um, errors, infos, et cetera, those all have a different color gets assigned to them that kind of helps uh, differentiate them, make, make them stand out here in the channel. So it's taking a little bit longer this time around. But there we go. So you can see messages start to get pushed into here as long as being displayed here on my screen. So take a moment here and are there any questions on configuring log handlers, on configuring the log levels uh, with EC tools? I'll, of course, have more time at the end of the presentation if there are any questions that come up. So we're going to shift gears a little bit, and we're going to talk about a new feature that is going to be released with the next version of ECE tools that's coming up soon, uh, and that is the configuration schema. One of the things that makes ECE tools really powerful 
is how flexible and configurable it is. And a lot of that comes down to the, the dozens of configuration variables we provide that you can use to adjust EC tools' behavior, as well as how it configures your Magento uh, installation. Previously, these variables were all kind of defined in this single massive PHP class. Uh, and then the documentation for them was in this separate static file in the repository, as well as in the devdocs repository. This became a kind of a chore for all of us to maintain, having them split across these different places. Uh, and having massive monolithic PHP classes is kind of a, a pretty bad uh, design practice historically. So to address this in the next version of EC tools, we have split this all out into a separate YAML file, schema.yaml, uh, and that file is going to be a central place for all this information. So the schema YAML will define all the variables type, uh, whether they are uh, Boolean, integer, et cetera, what stage they're valid in, whether they are valid for a build or deploy or global stages, what the default values for those variables are. So for example, SCD compression level has a different default value, whether it is in the build or the deploy context. So that's all defined in the schema YAML. Um, if a variable has a certain list of possible values, we'll see that in a second, but we can specify what that set is. Uh, and then the, any other custom validations that go along with those variables. In addition, in this YAML file, we're adding some in-context documentation for those variables. So we're giving a description for every single variable, as well as some examples of its usage. So let's take a look at one of these variables in the schema YAML. And since we mentioned min logging level earlier in the presentation, let's take a look at what it looks like in schema YAML. So you can see we defined a variable. We give it a description here at the top. I've truncated this just so that it all fits onto one slide. We declare its type. These, again, are all your standard PHP types, string, integer, booleans, et cetera. Min logging level has an allowed set of values, right? That's the, the log levels I showed you at the beginning of the presentation. And so we, again, restrict what its allowed values are to these sets that I've truncated again. Min logging level is only valid in the global stage. And then here's this default value for the global stage. And then we have an example of this um, for, our, uh, for usage. Now, this file is going to be added to EC Tools' repository, and so it will be in your vendor folder if you want to dig in there and find it. But if you want to make it a little bit more accessible, we've created a new command within EC Tools, uh, EC Tools Schema Generate, that will create a markdown file based upon this YAML and put that into the root of your project. It makes it very easy to look up this documentation and have it at your fingertips at all times. So let's see what that looks like. You see my deployment has finished, thank goodness. Uh, if I do vendor bin schema generate and give it a second, we'll have that Magento ENV uh, MD created. And let me switch over to my editor real fast. And let's take a look at what that looks like. So here we can see this markdown file with all of our commands, a description for each one, some uh, details about um, its properties, and then those examples laid out for you uh, in a really easy to read and navigate file. Uh, if you have a markdown parser, you could then convert this into HTML. And if you want to put it somewhere that's a little bit more easy to navigate, there's a lot of flexibility here for you. So I'm really excited about that. I think it's going to be a kind of cool feature going forward. So, where is that? There we go. All right. Now, of course, even with all this documentation bundled with you, um, our Gold standard in terms of resources information is still our dev docs. So uh, at the end here, I want to make sure that we had a few kind of links out there to uh, give you some more information on setting up log handlers, uh, on setting up notifications. These are kind of specialized log handlers, basically your Slack and email handlers, and then more details on those variables, right? So if you have any questions on variables on log handling, I strongly encourage you all to go check out the dev docs, um, go there to look for any kind of details on things you are looking for. Um, and with that, um, are there any other questions on the schema or on logging with any CE tools?
Thank you, Ben. It was very nice. That's it. I think that's it. Um, yeah, as, as always, we upload those uh, videos to our YouTube channel. So please feel free to uh, reach uh, Ben or reach the Cloud team in the Slack channel if you have any question after this video. And have a great day. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day.